Okay, verse 19. Tom, you want to read this one? Yeah, Rabbi. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Lo tate mispat lo takir panin bilo tikap shokad ki a shokad iya i a u r i a u r etne ene chakam chakamin bisalep dibre chadikim. Okay. Very very good. Just two words. Let me correct you on this one. Is ye aver ye aver. Right, so you see, this one has to be a v because he has a vowel underneath, right? So yeah, aver, and then a ne, and then we don't have a ch sound, right? Chachamim, right? Chachamim. Okay. All right. So good. Let's translate now all together. Lo tate mishpat. Who knows what this is? Lo. Well, lo. Just start with lo. Yep. Do not. And then this next verb. I'm going to tell you he's a lama. I'm pardon me. It's a pay noon verb. Pay noon. This guy, which means this dagesh is telling you there's a noon that's part of the root. So the root is actually. Look, he's actually doubly weak. He's pay noon and it's lama hay, <laughs> but the hay is still here for us here, fortunately. So. Nata means to bend or to waver, right? To bend or to waver, to swerve. So, lo tate, you shall not bend, shall not cause to waver. Mishpat, what's mishpat? I think it, judgment. Close. Well, you, you're right. It can it can mean judgment. Actually, you're exactly right. One meaning is judgment. Justice. Yeah, and justice is the second meaning. I'm going to select here. Yep. Mishpat has those two meanings. One, it can mean judgment. So you're right. It can mean judgment. So it can be also like a verdict. Right? So judgment. And then two, it can also mean justice. Right? And in this case, we're going with justice. You shall not... Actually, either one will work, right? You shall not bend judgment, right? Or justice, right? So pervert. Oftentimes in, in Hebrew... When we're talking about perversions, we're talking about something becoming crooked, right? Meaning its path is like a helix instead of straight, right? Or it's zigzagging instead of straight. Or it's bent, right? So it takes somebody off of the derech hayashar, like Yeshua talked about the straight path, right? The straight and narrow path, the derech hayashar. When the sin language, perversions have to do with wavering off of that path, right? And there's even words for perversity that literally mean like crooked in shape. Right, which is interesting. We get crooked in English. So it could be justice or judgment here. You shall not pervert, you could say. Literally bend. You shall not pervert justice or judgment. Lo takil. Takil is another pay noon verb. Pay. So what is the root if I've told you it's a pay noon verb? What is the root of this guy? First letter? In the root. Nakir? Yeah, that's right. Nakir? Yeah, that's right. So noon, noon, kaf, and reish. Right? That's the root. If you need to look it up in a lexicon. Nakar. Nakar means to recognize. To recognize or to be familiar. Metaphorically, it's to be familiar, right? So what binyan? Can you guys recognize what binyan this is? Is. Oh, by the way, yes, somebody asked me a question. Is. Yes, okay. I will post this, uh, Aliyah, on YouTube. Yep, yeah, I will. Yes. He feel very good, sister. How did you know that it's he feel? The what? Okay, okay, yep, very good, yeah. So she saw the patak here, which isn't always reliable, but the yod, that's the sure thing. That this is... Oh, I chose the wrong color. <laughs> Purple's not working out so well. Hold on. Patak for the imperfect. Very good, he feel, nice. So she recognized it's he feel imperfect. Good. So he feels causative, right? Okay. So literally this is saying, you shall not cause to recognize. Is really what it's saying. That's the hyper little mean. You shall not cause to recognize panim. What is panim? Face. Yeah. Before. Yeah, face or faces, right? Face or faces. Presence. Yeah. So so it's like you shall not recognize someone's face, right? You shall not give favor, basically. Velo. Or face value. Yeah, face value. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's a good way to remember it. Nice. Velo tikach. Okay. Velo, you know. Velo. 
And yep. that... Tikak. Now, tikak, this is kind of a special verb. <laughs> it's not a pay noon. But, uh, la, yeah, lakak, you just have to learn. Lakak works this way. Um, yeah, very good. Yep. The lamed went in there. That's why we have a dagesh, right? This is just a call, binyan. It's just call. But the dagesh is in there. Exactly. So, what does tikak mean? You went? Give. Take, take, take. take. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You That's take. right. You So, below tikak, you shall not take. You can maybe say accept. Shochad. What is a shochad? Louder, Naomi? Yeah, a bribe. It's a bribe. They shall not take a bribe. Don't accept a bribe. Ki ha shochad ya avel aine chachamim. Okay. Ki, what's ki? Because. Because. Hashochad, the bribe. The bribe. Ye aver. I don't expect you to know this. Do you know what an ever is? Ever, sometimes you see it as aver. It's a blind person. So this is the verb, and it's in PL. So it's like to be blind would be in the call, and the PL is to to become blind, right? Ye aver. So. For the bribe, you are there. Yeah, but go ahead, Rabbi. Um, I thought this is that's a shurek. Uh, I, Bob there, like a it's shurek. okay. I, I realized what happened to you. Like, yeah, 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 I realized <laughs> you didn't see the two little dots there. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Um, so the bribe causes blindness, it makes what blind? A ne chachamim. So we have a construct chain here. What's that mean? A ne chachamim. I... Say it louder. Sorry. The wise. Yeah, that's right. The, yeah, the eyes of the wise, right? Like even their their perception is influenced once they've started to take bribes, right? Visaleh divrei tzadikim. Okay, this one you probably don't know. So this is a PL word, which means so sileh is to to twist, to twist. Like bend too many times, right? So again, we have a nice Hebrew parallelism. We start off with bending, right? Like really bending, right? Like distorting. And now we finish it. We slam dump baseball home run with twist. And twists, divrei tzadikim. What's that mean? That construct chain. Divrei tzadikim. Not the word of righteousness. Yeah, yeah. Words of yeah, right. that's right. Words of righteousness. Or justice. So I want you guys to recognize this nuance of tzedek. So you've done well memorizing the gloss. Now let's go a bit deeper. So tzedek, it can mean, like you said, righteous. In Greek, pikaesumi, righteous. Or like a righteous person or whatever. But it can also mean just. Just. In a lawsuit, in biblical language, the person who's correct in the lawsuit, in the court case, if it's a man, that's the tzedek. Or, the, pardon me, the tzaddik. Sorry, the tzaddik. The tzaddik is the verdict. The tzaddik is in those contexts. The tzaddik, we oftentimes say tzaddik is a righteous person, right? Like uh, Jews in the States, like, you know, let's say where you're at the university and one of your Jewish pals says, hey, who wants pizza? I'm buying. Then the others could go, ah, Tzaddik! <laughs> He's a Tzaddik! He's a righteous guy. He's buying pizza for everybody. That's just cultural insight there. So a Tzaddik can be a righteous man, but it can also be a just man, right? So Tzaddik can be justice. So it's so you see the nice Hebrew parallelism here? Let me change colors. We have, um, we have Mishpat. Mishpat, justice. And now we have Sadikim. Sorry, I, sh I should have noticed the Yod there. Sadikim are like righteous people. So the word is actually Sadik. The one I was talking about in my example. Sadik. So a Sadik or a Sadik is a righteous man. righteous man or a just man.
You see how in Hebrew, the concept of righteousness and, and proper application of law are very close, right? So mishpat, we have justice over here, and now we have the person who is justice exemplar, which are the tzadikim. So the enei chachamim, they become blind, and the divrei tzadikim, the words of the just people, become twisted. Okay. Any questions or comments? Rabbi, yes, Yomar. Why is it that the word Rabbi, hold on, Tom, you're next. No what, what, Yomar? I asked as no. As no yod. Yeah, this is the word good tzadikim. question. So Yomar is asking about here. Notice there's no yod. So you'll see this from time to time. This is what's called a defective spelling. Defective or defective, sometimes they'll say. Defective. And so what happened was the consonantal text, remember there weren't vowel markers, didn't have the yod. And so whenever this happens, the Masoretes, they just say, okay, they don't want to, they don't want to touch the consonants, right? The consonants are seen as very holy. The scribes don't want to change them. So for whatever reason, before there was spelling, standardization, and all this stuff, this particular scribe, it could be something as simple as he ran out of room on that line, right? Like you saw me do before, right? I, I suddenly made it smaller, my writing, remember? So you'll see this in certain prayer books and stuff. So he's writing in the text, oh my gosh, I ran out of space. He'll leave the yod out, right? Don't know what it means, right? So it's from different eras, sometimes there's different spelling methods that are applied. Even in English, we didn't have spell, standardized spelling just a few centuries back, right? So so what the Masrits did for us, they added the kirikir to show us it's tzadikim. It's not tzadikam or something like that, right? Like their righteous one, right? They made sure we understand in context, okay? You'll also see, you'll even see this, yes, you'll yeah. even see it with dual words, like Yerushalayim. Oftentimes, we won't have that last yod at the end. It's pretty common, uh, especially in Tehillim. You see Yerushalayim and there's no yod, they'll do the Kirik there. Yeah, good question. Okay, any other questions or comments? Rabbi, yes. this uh, parasha is the creation of Sanhedrin. Yes. Uh, when Miss Moses. Yeah. Yes, nice observation, yes. Yeah. Rather, it's a repetition of the creation of Sanhedrin, right? Most of the stuff in Deuteronomy is a repetition, kind of a summary. Moses is summarizing for us. So there, I think there's only, I think there are, are three new mitzvot that are given in Deuteronomy, and all the rest are are at least derivable from what came before in the previous books. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's see. So, 558, let's see. Hmm. Thank you.